and good day. Well, welcome to Toronto's Unfriendly Skies, and today we'll be flying the P-228. And this is an interesting aircraft, the one that never went all that far. The um, It is the British Heavy Fighter at Tier 9. It carries a heck of a lock, rocket load, but I will not be carrying the rocket load today. Uh... In general, you know, if we got enough GA on your side, I just don't see the purpose to it. Slows the aircraft down, and I think it's something that um, it takes a uh, 411 mile per hour cruise speed aircraft and knocks it down to just over 400 miles an hour. You've got to compete with. ME-262s on this, the Russian equivalent, well, as close as they come, I guess, and the Germans, um, as well as your other two, uh, 228s, and so for me, that's a problem. Now, the aircraft comes with four Aden cannons which I have got to assume is before the Mark IV. And this air, uh, aircraft armament bears a little explanation. And you heard me talk about the Mauser 213 uh, revolver cannon before. And that was the mother of all revolver cannons. And they came in two versions, a slash 30 and a slash C. And the Slash C fired standard Mauser 2300 mile, uh, feet per second. I believe that was correct. I'd have to look it up to be sure. Um, mine shells. In other words, you took a 20 millimeter shell, you thinned it out just enough to be able to hold together to impact, and you packed it full of explosives. And it's a terribly destructive round. But it's our, and that's what came in the uh, 213C. And the 213-30 used the uh, cannon rounds that came out of the uh, Mark uh, 108. So it's a 100, it's a uh, 30 millimeter by 173 millimeter uh, cartridge case. In other words, 1800 uh, foot per second uh, basketballs and the British took that made almost no changes to it but none of the revolver cannons came easy and the US came out with the mark 39 which is a 20 millimeter 3300 feet per second uh, 20 uh, millimeter shell and it first showed up in 1952 as the Mod-E. And i say they came out, worked okay, but just okay. And they really didn't get finished with the development and have the gun where you could say, this gun is going to work 99.9% .9 of the time until 1961-62, right in that time frame. So late 1961 to early 1962, they started coming out with the version that really, really worked well. This is equipped with four Aiden cannon, but you'll notice a difference between this and the 262. And several of my friends and I were talking about this, and in the fact that the uh, 262 is more accurate. The dispersion is less and the damage is more. And I find that very strange because the British made no change that they absolutely didn't have to to make the gun work. Now understand, as the 213C sat on the bench, it was nowhere near ready for prime time. And the uh, that gun would not have been ready for six years, seven years, eight years. Not that it wasn't a good design. Everybody thought that it was a very worthy design, and everybody designed them. 
but I will tell you as late as um, 1968, the U.S. was looking at the um, Swedish Orkelon KCA revolver cannon, and you talk about a monster. 30 millimeter milk bottle size cases. They were spitting out uh, rounds at 3,400 uh, feet per second. And they would have, to, when they looked at the gun, they would, uh, they had to redesign it, big portions of it. Because the metal that they were, they were using, a nitrated type of uh, steel, trying to get through, uh, use that and try to get by on the cheap. And uh, the U.S. essentially went in, looked at it, said, okay, we can change this part, this part, this part, this part, and this is the material that you use, um, and got it to working and passed it back on to Ar Arcalon as here's how you need a product to improve your, can <laughs> your cannon so that you can fire more than 200 rounds without every part in it having to be replaced or critical parts in it. Things like, you know, the levers, the supporting top structure, <laughs> Fairly major stuff. Um, but to make a long story short, this cannon is has a lot more dispersion than the 213C, despite this being the perfected version of the 213C. The cannons ought to be exactly equivalent, and they are not. And they should be. And this is something that I'm going to urge World War Points to take a look at because it's not right. You can go check out your own. Um, I would urge them to go back to their research teams and mark my words, they have research teams. You guys have seen the Chieftain's videos on World of Tanks. They have equivalents in World of Warships. They have equivalents in uh, World of Warplanes. All right. And I know a little bit about aircraft weapons uh, development. <laughs> also, admittedly, all self-study, but I've learned a little bit. And of all planes uh, and all systems, the DIFA and the Aiden cannons were very, very similar, and both fairly slavish copies of the German work, and then product improved until they actually met the mean round between failure goals of the various services. Both they, the U.S., and uh, the Armaments Development Establishment and DIFA were all talking with each other. And it's not a surprise that the really good working versions all came out about the same time in 1954. Now, from 1954 on, the uh, cannons work more or less the way they were supposed to. Uh, the U.S. was still not happy with it because as far as they were concerned, no cannon should ever fail, ever, and it has been kind of documented that they are more than a little uh, anal retentive, I guess that would be the term that you would use in the psychological term, about reliability. So they were never happy with the Mark 12 cannon because it would jam under high G loads. Um, nobody ever sang the praises of the variants of the Hispano 404 cannons. They were very reluctant to use them but didn't have a better uh, alternative until this came out and then the Air Force bombed on. But they are, of all uh, the branches of the service, the Air Force is extremely picky about its armament. That's why it had the M2, M3 so for so long. And, you know, so they kept working at it and working at it and working at it because even though the M61 Gatling didn't come out, the they still had a lot of aircraft that were going to use the M39 for at least the next 10 years. And the problem with the M61 Gatling is even though it was superior on every detail, even weight, when you 
got, uh, if you wanted to have 6,000 rounds a minute, you get either got four uh, revolver cannon or you got one M61. But the system was big enough that you literally had to build the aircraft to take the M61. So they had a lot of reasons for keeping it. It takes a lot of work to get the revolver cannons working right. They're just very, very, very complex. And this gun system is not equivalent to a 262 HG2, and it should be. That's what all this discussion has been about. There's no reason for it not to match. Uh, yeah, it's funny how, in this game, all British armament tends to be crap if it's not a Hispano 404, which kind of was crap. And <laughs> the Aiden cannons were, you know, you can see de firing demonstrations on YouTube. These were not bad cannon at all. So why they became the bad poster child of poor performance in this game, I do not know. Listen, I want to take a minute to thank you for watching. Please remember to like the video, to subscribe, and be safe out there. Life is precious and short. Kind of fragile, too. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.